Welcome, my name is Kim Edgar and I'm a consultant at NetSpot. This short video aims to give you an overview of the new features in Moodle 2.3. For a full list of the new features, you can go to Moodle Docs and each of the features is linked to far more information about them. We'll touch on most of these features during this video. I've now logged in to my Moodle 2.3 environment and I've navigated to a course um, that I've used previously to work with assessment and advanced grading. You can see it looks like a typical Moodle course with the three columns. To have a look at some of the new features uh, for Moodle 2.3, I'm going to click on Turn Editing On. You might notice that at the top of the screen, a little message pops up to tell us that we can drag and drop files. We will have a look at that shortly. There are lots of fantastic enhancements with um, Moodle 2.3 just on the course screen. So you can see that one of the things um, to the right of the items is an additional icon which is called Edit Title. This allows you to edit the title of um, any item that has a title easily on your course page without having to go to the um, particular items edit screen. So I'm just going to rename this resource to what's new in Moodle 2.3 and press enter. So a simple thing but something that potentially could save a lot of time. Another um, very time-saving item is found at the bottom of the course page so I'm just going to scroll down and we'll see down at the bottom right hand side a small plus and minus sign which allows us to add and remove topics or weeks from our course without having to go to our edit settings. So for example we've got this blank topic 4 being shown at the bottom of our course. I could just hide that or I can now click on the little minus sign to reduce the number of sections that are being shown in my course. So another very quick and easy time saving item. We have um, also, you may have noticed as I was scrolling there, that we have a new way of choosing activities and resources. The activity chooser now groups all of the activities and resources into the one screen. And when you click on each of the um, items, you'll see on the right hand side a more extensive help uh, text which allows new users to discover more about each of the items. The items are still separated into activities and resources, so familiar to those people who are um, Moodle users. And in addition to that, I'll just cancel out of here. If you prefer to go back to the traditional way of um, accessing the activities and resources, you can easily ch turn the activity chooser off in the course administration menu. So if I click on Activity Chooser Off, you'll see we go back to the two separate lists, Add a Resource and Add an Activity. I'll just turn that back on again. Another great feature uh, for our course homepage is the ability to show one topic or section at a time. So you'll notice that this course, it's not too bad, but it does take a bit of scrolling to find the content. And in each of the sections, we've got a title and a bit of an introduction to the section. Let's go into our edit settings. And you'll notice that underneath format that we now have course layout. So the two choices are to show all sections, which we've got um, currently, or to show one section per page. I'll just save that so we can see what the result is. When I turn editing off, You'll notice that um, the scroll bar is much shorter, so we're scrolling through uh, much less content, and that each section has been collapsed to just its summary. At the bottom of each section, we can see what uh, the contents of, those section, of that section is, and if we click on the title for the section, we'll go to that section. So we're still seeing our summary at the top of the screen, but now we can see all of the items which are included in the creating a web quest topic. You'll also notice that we have a navigation link to take us to the next topic and at the bottom of the screen we've got a return to main course page which will take us back to the main page. Let me click on creative writing. 
And you'll now see that the navigation includes a, a previous topic link as well as a next topic link. So that's quite a nice um, new way of organising our course and trying to avoid the scroll of death. I'll go back to return to main course page. Another fantastic feature is that you can now restrict access to an entire section. I'm just going to turn editing on again. And you'll notice, by the way, that even though we have one section per page selected in our course settings, when editing is on, you can see all sections in your course. And uh, say, for example, we want our users to complete some activities in our introductory section prior to getting access to the WebQuest section. In the summary for that section, you'll now find completion activity settings the same way that you would have found them in previous versions for each individual activity. So we've got the um, activity uh, completion condition um, and uh, what the section will look like prior to it being accessed. Another new feature that um, has been long awaited is that now if you make changes to a particular um, item and try to navigate away from the item without saving it, you'll get a message coming up letting you know that you're trying to navigate away from the page and you haven't saved your changes. So in this case we will leave this page but um, it's good to have that visual warning that you're about to lose content if you do move away from the page. So another really simple thing but fantastic for usability. What I'd like to have a look at now is some of the new drag and drop features. So one thing um, is that you can now drag and drop blocks. So if we have a look um, over on the right hand side, you'll notice that I get the little flat hand when I hover over any of the titles for my blocks. And if I hold my left mouse button down and drag, I can drag that block up or down. You can also drag and drop files and I'm just going to drag my file manager window onto interview and say we're wanting to um, get some of these case studies into the first section of our course. Again, if I hold my left mouse button down on that file and move it onto the course section, you'll see that at the bottom of the section we get an add files here link and if I place my file on the little plus sign and release my mouse button, that file is loaded. So I can continue doing that, which is quite quick and easy. You might have also noticed that um, the icon set is a, a much prettier icon set. So we have nicer looking icons for the different file types. I'll just move that file window out of the way. Now that we've added those files, we can drag and drop them to where we want them. So say I want to put them up. Didn't quite grab hold of that one that time. Up here with the other resources, I can use that drag and drop to do that. And then I can use the move arrows to line them up. So we've got our resources all lining up nicely. Another fabulous file enhancement is the ability to link to existing files. So I've already uploaded some files into my uh, private files area and I'm going to use the activity chooser to load to link to those files. So this will give us a chance of having a look at the new file picker as well, which is quite um, has quite a lot of improvements. So you can see um, over here in the um, content section that we have the ability to drag and drop files. So we could use the file management tool again, drag our little file management, um, sorry, drag our files onto this section. Or we can still use a more traditional way of adding files by clicking on the add button. In this case, as I said, I want to access files which are currently in my private files area. So I'm going to click on private files. And you'll see the files loaded, uh, sorry, you'll see the files listed that I've previously loaded. You'll also notice at the top right hand side that we've got a little view 
um, selector tool and um, this is fantastic as it allows us to change the way that we're viewing our files. Again, another simple enhancement but really makes the file picker a lot easier to use and a lot more similar to, the, um, to other tools that you might be using for file management. So I'm going to click on Case Study 3 and you'll notice that the um, dialog box that comes up gives me the choice of making a copy of the file or to create an alias or a shortcut to the file. So in this case, that's what I'm going to do. This way, if I change case study three in my private files, all of the links to that file that I've made will be updated. And I'm going to click on select this file. Let me just quickly put in a name and a description and then we'll save that addition. And we can reorganize those files as we did before. It's important to note that while Moodle can now link to those files in your repositories, it's still not a file management tool. So we have some additional functionality, but it's not going to replace a learning content management system and it's not intended to. Another enhancement that you may have noticed while we've been working with files is that you can add, you can have the file size and type being displayed on your course page. Let's have a look at some of the new assignment features. I'm going to click on add an activity or resource and you'll notice that at the moment we have got assignment and assignment 2.2. So in Moodle 2.3 there is a new assignment module which includes all of the subtypes that were in the previous versions of Moodle. Your site administrator can choose to leave both assignments showing or to just have the new assignment 2.3 visible. There are a number of reasons you might decide to leave both visible, at least for a short time, particularly if you're using some of the special assignment types such as Turnitin assignment or Mahara assignment views. The new assignment module, if I select that one and click on add, allows you to do everything that you could do in the previous assignment module and subtypes but from one screen. So rather than having to select an individual subtype, you can use your settings to determine whether the um, assignment is online or offline, how many files are allowed, the file size and a whole range of other settings. The new assignment module paves the way for a range of other enhancements which we'll see coming later in 2012 as plugins and hopefully in the future they'll be incorporated into Moodle Core. You'll also notice in the grading method that we have not only rubric but also marking guide. Rather than continue to set up this assignment from scratch, we're going to cancel out of this screen and have a look at one that's already been set up so that we can contrast the difference between the two advanced grading forms. I'm going to scroll down in my course to the creative, uh, creative writing assignment one and click on edit. This particular assignment already has a rubric assigned, so if we scroll down to have a look at the grading method, you'll see that um, the grading method is rubric. And if I click on advanced grading in the assignment settings on the left hand side, we'll see the rubric that's currently assigned. So just to um, revise the way that rubrics look, you can see that there are multiple criteria and within each criteria there are multiple ranges. The marking guide uses a similar feature, but is slightly simpler. So if we click on marking guide, and um, there is a marking guide already uh, defined. So you can see here that um, we've got a marking guide that has a range of criteria, but each criteria only has one level. That's the main difference between the marking guide and the rubric. If we um, edit this form, you'll see that the interface is quite simple, similar to the rubric. We can do a range of things such as adding other criteria and then we can just um, give the criteria description, give the students some instructions, 
give the marker some instructions and also set the mark for that particular criteria. Clicking away from the criteria automatically saves it. You can see that the criteria can be reorganised and it's also easily deleted. So I'm just going to click on the delete icon and yes, we will delete that one. Another fabulous feature is the ability to add frequently used comments. So you can see here that a range of comments have been added and we could click on add frequently used comment and perhaps we'll say incomplete submission. And again, clicking away from that automatically saves it. At the bottom of the screen, we can decide whether we're going to show um, the uh, definition and the marks to students. In this case, we will. So I'll click on Save there. We'll now return to the course and we'll have a look at what that looks like for a teacher grading that particular assessment item. So I'm going to click on the assessment item view, grade or submissions. And I've had one uh, new submission that hasn't been graded. I'm going to click on the grade icon. And you can see that we've got a very nice form that we can use the comment field to type freeform comments, or we can use our frequently used comments, plus we can score against the total marks. You don't have to put a comment in. Let's give the student full marks. You can um, use the other tools which are familiar from other assignment types. And let's just save those changes. And go back to the main page. There are many other new features, including the book module being included as core, improvements to the quiz module, and a range of other things around security, API updates, repositories, and a whole range of um, excellent new features for uh, site administrators as well as for teachers. For more information about these additional features, go to the release notes on Moodle Docs as shown in these links. There's also extensive documentation about Moodle 2.3. And if you want to learn more about NetSpot, you can go to our website at www.netspot.com.au. For any of you that may have seen any other of my presentations, you'll know that my presentation is never complete without a picture of my dog, Dougal. So thank you very much for uh, your attendance and good luck with your moodling. Bye.